What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Randy here with RTS Mobile with the Pandemic Corporation and the Silent Alliance. And I'm here today playing some Eve Echoes, bringing you a very cringe-worthy video. Uh, we are playing the Cinnabon, and I'm going to be comparing two PvP builds for you today. Uh, should be a lot of fun, so give me a like and sub. And let's just get right into it, right? <clears throat> I apologize if you hear me cough or my voice sounds like a uh, horse's nuts dragging in a bunch of gravel. It's because I'm currently enjoying the COVID. Uh, and because of that, I uh, I just, it is what it is. I also just recently took some NyQuil. So if I start slurring my speech towards the end of the video, uh, I'm either stroking out or, <laughs> or I'm going to pass out at my keyboard. I'll let you decide which uh, at your leisure. So here we go into the video today's video today <laughs> today's video today we are talking about the comparison between the large shield booster pvp build and the large shield extender pvp build so of course we're not talking about really any offensive capabilities other than the uh, maybe energy neutralization capabilities we are instead talking uh, solely about uh, well, primarily about the defense and the capacitor, okay? So the build I'm currently running right now, as you just saw, uh, it has the large shield booster. It has the Type-C medium afterburner. It has the Type-C capacitor battery. It has a red uh, Type-C adaptive and vulnerability field. And it has, of course, the uh, gyro stabilizers, okay? It's also running for some reason, because this is the build that someone suggested to me, it's also running a large energy neutralizer, which could be useful in some situations, absolutely. Um, okay, so to jump right into it, uh, let me go ahead and, okay, the red's off. To jump right into it, uh, let's talk about the capacitor first. So with this um, shield booster, uh, right, you're spending 331 gigajoules every 6.16 seconds, and that equates to uh, exactly 3,224.026 gigajoules per minute expenditure. For your pain, since that's uh, you know two-thirds of your capacitor, for your pains, you're going to be regenerating 9,000 flat, uh, 9,000 flat shield boost per minute. So that's 924 times 6.16. <clears throat> oh, sorry, that's, uh, you know, you, uh, little, little. that is the 9.74 rotations per minute times 9.24, okay? So you get 9,000 flat energy uh, shield boosts per minute, not energy, shield boost per minute, and it's going to cost you 3,224 uh, gigajoules per minute to do that, okay? And that's important, so remember that. Now let's talk about the defense itself, okay? Your resistances are going to look how they are. They're going to be base resistances without the red active. So let's pop the red. So 30k base resistance, right? Now we're going to look at with the red up. Now we're looking at 35, 466. I've got that written down here. Your resistances look a little bit better with your red active, but they're still not God's gift to Earth, okay? So keep all this in mind when I talk about this next topic, okay? So with these resistances, you are regenerating 9,000 shield per minute, right? You're boosting 9,000 shield per minute, which is great. Uh, but it's not being... It, uh, the amount of shield you're regenerating is not being impacted by a, you know, an enormously significant amount of resistance. If you were able to significantly increase your resistances across the board the shield that you're regenerating would be much more effective. So that's going to take it to my uh, interpretation of the shield extender build. Uh, since I don't actually, if you can't tell, like the shield booster better, let me make a few swap roos here, right? So remember, 9,000 regen, your capacitor is gone in 1 minute and 12 seconds, right? Uh, and, and by the way, that's not even talking about if you use this neutralizer. If you activate this neutralizer twice, you have no capacitor. Your capacitor is gone. So, um, just walking through that. Uh, okay, let's swap out the capacitor because I don't care about that. We'll put a NOS on. We'll keep the burner on. We'll swap out the battery. We'll swap out the booster for a large shield extender. 
We'll swap out the battery for a second red, right? You like that? I can put a second red on and really have some resistance now. Very good. Uh, okay, fantastic. And I can swap out this rig that I have on. I have this core defense charge economizer three, uh, which increases my shield boost amount by 30%. So by switching to the extender, I can change this for another defensive rig, like a resistance rig or something like that. Um, let's put on, well, I don't care. We'll put on EM screen. Sure. We'll put on the EM, EM screen here. And now my EM resistance will be pretty nice. My overall EHP just skyrocketed, right? You saw that uh, between the extender base shield uh, increase, right? As well as my increased resistance uh, to EM. My base EHP is much nicer now, right? And let's go ahead and uh, look at the capacitor. This capacitor is so stable, it could win a Nobel Prize. So I just want to point that out. This is a lot of gigajoules per second. This is going to uh, out-regen a small, you know, uh, neutralizer or Nosferatu's, you know, probably two of them uh, on you at any given time. Um, <clears throat> of course, if you're fighting, you know, like an Ashimu, you'll still have, you know, your own issues with that, but that's different. So on to the defensive. Let's go ahead and undock here. Um, and I'll talk you through the resistances and the differences between the regeneration abilities of the extender versus the booster. <clears throat> we'll wrap this video up soon. I know it's getting we're 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 going on here. So, just wanted to walk you through both builds and compare them. Okay. So, let's pop both reds. Let's get everything rocking and rolling. You can see that my EHP is enormously higher. It it's twenty two thousand higher. So my EHP before was thirty five four sixty six. Now it's fifty seven three thirty five. So the exact difference there is going to be twenty one eight sixty nine, which is actually um, which is uh. <clears throat> like a 39% increase. So you're getting like a 39% increase in your base EHP just by having the extender with the additional resistance uh, and the additional red on, right? Before even popping your 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 um, extension. So already out the gate, you have a lot of additional regen. Uh, uh, a lot of additional EHP, okay? Your capacitor is stable as a mofo, which is also great, right? Um, so now the only thing left to talk about is what is the actual regen differences and cost per minute differences of the extender versus the shield booster, okay? So I've done the math for you. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. I'm the best. <clears throat> that night is starting to kick in. I'm seeing, seeing spots. <laughs> or it's a sign for a heart attack. I don't know. Call the uh, call the naked uh, after dark hotline and find out for yourself. Okay, large shield booster. All right. So, uh, okay. Okay, great. So the power grid requirements are substantial, right? The power grid requirement for the uh, the booster was three hundred twenty two. The shield boost amount was nine thousand per minute. Uh, the activation cost per minute was 3224 um, so compared to the extender the power grid is almost double that it's 631 power grid requirement which means I can't fit that large newt if I wanted to right and it also has a uh, half of the shield boosting amount so if you think of it like this in the first minute the shield booster provides 9,000 and in the first minute the shield extender increases you and you know, extends you by 80, uh, what's those two combined? Um, 85, 32. They're pretty similar in the first minute as far as actual, you know, shield hit points given, okay? After the first minute, yeah, the shield booster is going to be a little bit over two times the amount of shield regeneration, like, like tangible, 
the the literal shield regeneration is going to be more than double the extender after the first minute. But for the first minute, they're neck and neck. Now you have to think like this: in that first minute, and a lot of a lot of battles aren't going to last longer than a minute, right? With your Cinnabol, it's they're going to be you know for PvP like you're not talking about. You know what I mean? Things going on for an hour. It's not going to happen with a Cinnabol. Um, Cinnabol does way too much damage. Uh, it's a super crazy high DPS ship. It's it's extremely uh, slick, and it has pretty good tankiness. So it you know a lot of fights will end end within within the first minute or two. But for the first minute, the most intense part of the PvP, right? You are uh, gonna have significantly higher value per shield point from the extender. Because the extender is going to give you similar, you know, overall shield boosting throughout the minute. Uh, but it's going to be applied to way higher resistances. Now, your resistances are massively higher. We were in the 50s before on EM and thermal, right? Now we're in the 70s on the, on the EM. We're almost to the 70s on the thermal. We're out of the 60s into the 70s on explosive and kinetic. So you have now massively increased your shield uh, resistances. So the effectiveness of that 9,000 versus the 8532, really, it, it's going to be, you know, probably 20% more effective for the extender. Um, in addition to that, your capacitor is super stable. Okay. Uh, as I, as I showed you before, you're going to burn out. If the battle does magically go longer than a minute, your capacitor is gone anyways uh, with the other build. With this one, if it does go longer than a minute, you will be regenerating less, uh, you know, shield per second or per minute there, but your overall capacitor is going to be uh, absolutely phenomenal, okay? Um, and in addition to that, you have, uh, do I have anything else to talk about? <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> That's it. The NyQuil is definitely kicking in. So, there you go. You can make your own decision. Um, for the first minute, I would give the victory uh, firmly in the court of the Cinnaballs uh, large shield extender build. If you really wanted wanted to run a large um, a large neutralizer, you can probably swap out. You don't even you probably don't even need this capacitor on with how stable your cap is right now. You could probably put on a power grid rig, and since the power grid is so substantial on the Cinnabon. You can probably, uh, you will almost definitely be able to fit on that large newt here instead of the medium nos. So maybe that's the build you go. The cap, the cap is so stable right now. Maybe you drop this regeneration rig, uh, and you go ahead and put on a power grid rig, and then you run the uh, <clears throat> the large newt. Since your cap is so stable, you can handle it, and you'll still have uh, the same zapping ability, the same DPS much higher, uh, you know, EHP for the first minute. And after that, you know, you're, you'll be more stable than the other build. So that's my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. Do what you want to do with it. Come back to me with the comments. Uh, don't forget to give me that like and sub. Love you guys a long time. <clears throat> Randy out. Stay safe out there. By the way, if you feel sick, don't go. Don't go out. Don't go. Don't go to work. Right. My whole family has COVID right now because one of our idiot co-workers decided he felt sick, but he wanted to come to work and get the job done. He lit, That's literally what he said. He wanted to come to work to get the job done, right? It's like, no, dog, work at home if you have COVID, okay? You don't need to be putting people through through this shit. It's ridiculous. But anyways, thanks for watching. Love you guys a long time. Randy out.